The Voice of the Philippines is proud to join forces with the Philippine Star, ensuring that you get the most accurate, trustworthy, and timely news that you can use all day long. The Voice of the Philippines and the Philippine Star, teaming up to bring the news to you. We welcome comments from our listeners, whether it be on issues or our programming. Our phone numbers are 897-8374 and 895-4460. You can also email us your suggestions on our programming. DZRJ, 810 AM, the voice of the Philippines, heard nationwide and all over the world via the internet streaming, which can be accessed via rjplanet.com. We repeat, our phone numbers are 897-8374 and 895-4460. Thank you for listening. The views and comments of the hosts and guests are not necessarily those of the station. Radio Bandido, 810 AM. Okay, um, magandang umaga po, bayan. <laughs> this is Francis de Guzman. Uh, we're live on DCRJ, 810 AM. Good news, Filipinas. And um, we have very, very special guests today. Um, two of them are coming back after, uh, uh, after quite a time. And uh, one from New York, uh, Ted Allen. Uh, welcome back, Ted. And my good friend and brother, <laughs> Christ, uh, James Layug. Mabuhay ka, aking kapatid. Magandang umaga. Yes, magandang umaga. And uh, folks, we are excited because this day uh, we will be discussing uh, several issues still related to water. Would you believe that? Um, hindi pa ho tapos ang, ang labanan tungkol sa tubig. Kasi if, if, uh, I would like to read an editorial, you know, from the Philippine Star, which is our uh, partners in, in, in with the uh, radio uh, DCRJ at 10 a.m. Uh, it says here, water is still uh, being rationed. Yeah. May ration pa. In large portions of Metro Manila and some communities have yet to see their water service restored. And this is very true. Uh, even in the place where we're staying, uh, in San Juan, uh, hindi biro po yun. Nang, nang tanong ako dun sa former chairman ng barangay, sabi ko, kumusta ho yung tubig uh, ano nyo rito? He said it, it comes in on trickles and it was already 11 o'clock in the evening. Can you imagine that? So, uh, nakalagay rito uh, sa editorial ng um, Philippine Star, sabi niya, a week El Nino has led to a drought serious enough to warrant the declaration of a state of calamity in four provinces and 24 towns of the Philippines. The rainy season is still about two months away, so there is uh, no immediate relief in sight. Whoa, this is really terrible. And um, we, we have a very timely issue because um, our friend from New York, um, Ted, he is uh, an advocate of the water technology, you know, and uh, uh, our friend also, si Brother James Layog, uh, ang kanilang advokasya sa There is Hope movement. No? Uh, in Tagalog, it is May Pagasa movement. It's a movement that uh, provides advocacies like, uh, you know, the environment, uh, water, uh, aqua, and... Uh, Agriculture. We, we, uh, we advocate yes. uh, social balance. Yes, right. Understanding that uh, yeah. the community and the environment uh, goes hand in hand. They live together. So there has to be balance in uh, the use of our resources. So in yung, ano nang, that, that would be the, the overall. The social no? balance mm. includes not just social justice, um, social equity. It also involves social ecology oh, which is uh, uh, understanding that uh, we should live in harmony with our environment with nature oh, that's so true. that's already a, that was a, 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 a an indigenous knowledge that yes. was being practiced by our, our ancestors yes. till before the commercialism that was introduced by the colonizers mm -hmm. by the Spaniards the Americans and so forth and so on mm -hmm. so when commercialism came in uh, we saw, we looked at uh, nature as a source of profit, mm. more than as a partner in 
in breathing, in living uh, in, in, in our land. So, uh, for example, in water sustainability, the classic, the classic model for indigenous knowledge is the highlanders, our highlanders, the, those who live in the mountain province. So the, those, uh, the indigenous people or the, uh, the indigenous people of uh, the mountain province, before they cut trees, the tree, they have to uh, commit to the, to the deity that uh, they, they pay respect to the deity, to the tree. And then for every tree that they cut, they have to plant another 10, of, 10 trees wow. in replace of the tree that they cut. That. Why? Wow. Because they understand mm -hmm. that in the mountain province, uh, you have the, res the forest reservation on top of the, the mountain. Yes, right. Then mm -hmm. it, produ it traps the water, it mm -hmm. provides water down the stream. Yes. And then the stream goes to the the stream goes to the uh, yes right. the stream yes. goes to the uh, to the as an irrigation for their uh, rice field and then the rice field uh, is the source of uh, livelihood for the community mm. so that's how how it goes you know? so they know that uh, they have to live in balance with the uh, with, with nature. And uh, one thing that uh, what we're experiencing right now is because of uh, our lack of appreciation of our, of our resources that was given to us by God. Mm -hmm. It is a God-given gift to us. Uh, water, the trees, the air. It's, it's, it's bountiful here in, uh, in our country. But yet, uh, we spoil it. We destroy it because we do not... Uh, do not uh, care for our environment anymore because we are all profit driven mm -hmm. and commercialization comes in yeah, it's a, something like that so, so yeah. what we're advocating is let's go back to the basics mm -hmm. just respect the respect nature mm -hmm. respect your neighbor and then uh, yeah. you'll have your care for for the for the country you'll, have, you'll be patriotic and uh, it's already a it's, it's a mm -hmm. hero's uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. action in mm -hmm. um, it's an hero's act already. So that, that's how, how we, uh, we're trying to advocate that there's no really big, big solution here. There's no, you cannot have a grand uh, solution, uh, something dynamic, but it's just going back to the basics. We're 100 million Filipinos right now, going 110. In the next 10, 20 years, we'll be 150. Oh. And yet our land area, the country is not growing. Mm -hmm. Our resources is not growing. So if we don't stop destroying our resources, we'll be killing ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's what sure. we're doing right now. So we have mm -hmm. to educate from the, the seniors down to the youngest <laughs> member of generation. our society to understand that uh, <clears throat> yes. we have to conserve or else we'll be fighting over water, mm. over food. Yeah. And hopefully that's not over air. <laughs> so, so that's the advocacy mm, of the, mm, the group right now. Mm, uh, we're advocating. Let's go back to the basics. There's that, no grand solution. Mm, just uh, for us to under, just to commit that uh, we, we have to help each other. That's true. Because oh. we only have one country. And we all breathe the same air. No matter what your <laughs> politics is, you'll be, we are all breathing the same air. We're all brothers. Yeah. Yes. Whether that's true, brothers. <laughs> you'll be drinking the same water. So yeah, really. we have to help each other out. Mm. That's the advocacy of, uh, of the group. In fact, uh, the editorial you know, uh, is also uh, related to what Brother James was saying, the editorial of the Philippine Star. You know? yeah. It says here the continuing problems have brought uh, to the forefront, in fact, proposals you know, for a creation of uh, Department uh, of Water. Department, right. <laughs> oh, we have to create department for every problem that we right. have. By, by the, uh, I, I, uh, what can uh, you say? That's to just that, an bro? addition to the bureaucracy yeah. that we have. See? It's just about committing to the roles that uh, we mm -hmm. already have and then uh, doing the right thing. That, that's that's true. it. Just adding up another bureaucracy, uh, office, another bureaucracy, it's just, uh, it will not uh, solve the problem. Yeah, Unless do. we all commit that uh, we'll help each other, mm -hmm. we'll save water, we'll conserve our resources, and we'll not cut down the trees. <laughs> yes, it's a very important, yeah. you know, that's, that's basic. In fact, yeah. uh, he was saying earlier, it, it's about stewardship mm -hmm. of what yes. God has given us, you know, and nature's uh, 
the blessing that the Lord has given. So, um, you know, I was going over this, and uh, it says here the, with, the, uh, with the global warming, you know, water security is a growing uh, problem worldwide, you know, and it calls for a long-term planning and responses, no? Mm -hmm. That's what you were yeah. mentioning a while ago, Brother James. And if a new department can dream bureaucratic, <laughs> yeah, you know, fat, <laughs> uh, yeah, improve efficiency and do the job better, then the proposal must be pursued according to the editorial. But then, you know, uh, the problem comes in because um, uh, the, the the bureaucracy, you know, you layers of nakakaroon na problema talaga yan. Oh, but um, I think yes, that will be subject to to debate, a lot of debate, so right. that we can trash uh, trash out or flesh out the best uh, course of action. That's very true. If, if the okay. if another office, another department would be the wise thing to do, then, then so be it. But uh, <laughs> but right now, I'm not uh, I'm not really that. Uh, that inclined in creating, we always create a task force, we always create a, an office to solve one problem after another. It's just like a, you have a, you, you have holes inside, you're just uh, fixing, plug. <laughs> by plugging, it, plugging your finger to, in order to stop the, 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 the water, but uh, you're not really Do trying it. to solve right. why the, the ship is sinking. Yeah, you know, he's saying the truth. Uh, because the editorial had the, uh, the editorial cartoon, <laughs> yeah, and, and it says that the, the, the guy was trying to plug, to plug in, in a hole, one hole, <laughs> <laughs> it still pours in, and yeah. it was starting to flood, you know, flood the hole, flood in, flood you know? the hole. and so uh, it says here the United Nations has declared that access to safe water is a, a universal human right. You know, uh, the agencies uh, in charge of providing this basic need must be. Um, up to its task. That's what you were saying. Yeah. You know, they have to do their they job. To do their they job. have to, to be responsible. They have to be good stewards and, and all that, you know. So, Brother Ted, what can you say uh, uh, with what uh, our brother James has, uh, you know, I'll, opened I'll, up to you? <laughs> I would like to take it back to a historical context. Right. Okay. If I may, there's a, a text that is greatly misconstrued. And I believe that because it's so greatly misconstrued, we're in the dark ages. Okay. We're in the dark ages on a lot of things, but let's just take it in terms of sanitation and water delivery systems. Uh, back in the year 1455 AD, there was a group of people who had left Egypt, and they're standing at the base of a mountain. It's a mixed multitude of people from the 70 known languages. And as the person is speaking, we ask, who is speaking? Well, the as, as we consider the the teachings of the community of those who were there, the Israelites, uh, the, the sages will say, the, the teachers of that, they're saying that whenever the, uh, the Father speaks, the, our Heavenly Father, God, yes. uh, the Creator is speaking, that it is as if the Messiah is speaking. So Jewish sources are saying that it's literally the Messiah who's speaking in Mount Sinai. And what does he say? He says, these are 613 instructions that I really want you to keep because if you keep them, you're going to live in harmony. Yeah. And <laughs> we're not going to have these issues. You're going to be blessed for a thousand generations. But what happens over time? We fall away from it. Yeah. And so what happens 1,455 years from that, uh, the Messiah actually does come. And he pronounces, uh, well, what happens at Mount Sinai is, all, all people that are standing at the base of Mount Sinai, people from these 70 known languages, they say, we will do and we will keep all that you've instructed. They, they think this is the best deal going. They not only saw the miracles coming out of Egypt, they say, wow, this is a very special God. And then whenever the Messiah does come, he says, I didn't come to change anything that was pronounced at Mount Sinai. He said, we're going to live by these instructions. I just came to bring fulfillment to it which is precisely what he does. Yes, and historians say that there's never been a person in the history of the world who's had a more profound impact on, on the world than him, that many things have changed, that we, the, no figure has done more to remove idolatry and other things. This is very profound. So we've come out of dark ages now two times. What happens 1,455 years later? This is not by coincidence. We have the greatest invention of the second millennium. Johannes Gutenberg somehow has in his hand the document 
that was put together. It's called the Bible. And he was so impressed with the declaration of Yeshua, Jesus, at both Mount Sinai and the Sermon on the Mount, that he says, I want this to be made available to every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. And from that, he's declared to have the most profound impact on the world in the second millennium. This is absolutely amazing. It, it's wow. shaking our paradigm. <clears throat> yeah. So whenever we, today, every, the, the literacy rates are exploding around the world, mm -hmm. but we're not reading that narrative. We, we, it's considered old and irrelevant and things. Yet it's foundational to good relations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whenever we read this, we're going to leave the dark ages. We're going to mm -hmm. get together. We know how to read and write today. Our, our opportunity for advancement is staggering. I see such great hope, and I, I just applaud where you're coming from. I, I, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> thank you, you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I'm uh, yes. trying to mm -hmm. bring. Bring in is that uh, <clears throat> all the the knowledge that we're looking for, mm. all that the researches that uh, we wanted, or, or the great uh, inventions, or the great, mm. it's already there. It's already yes. provided for. Yes. By by the great architect himself. Amen. The great inventor like the himself. Great architect inventor. It's already <laughs> there. Food is already available. There's no reason for us to uh, to 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 go hungry, mm. to live in poverty. <laughs> mm. I, I, he, he he provided everything. That's why uh, one of our uh, one of our uh, one of our testimony mm. is when when we say that uh, we are so blessed as a country, because uh, if you'll see. When Jesus made the miracle of feeding uh, mm -hmm. 4,000, yeah. I think, uh, uh, multitude. Multitude, yeah. And, uh, uh, he, he asked for bread mm. and then fish. Mm. Right. <laughs> he provided <laughs> for bread and fish. <laughs> Meaning, uh, if you look at it on symbolic aspect, fish is really uh, the, the, you don't have, you, you, you cannot recreate, you do not recreate fish. It's already there. Mm. God already provided that for us. And uh, we, we have 200 uh, hectares of uh, coral reefs that produce reef, uh, fish every, every year. Mm. So there's no, no reason for us to go hungry mm. and live in poverty. But because we veered away from the desires of God and then mm. we, greed comes in, mm. Then we're destroying everything that was mm. provided for us to feed yes. us in the first place. Mm. So <laughs> very well said. So it's, it's just a matter of trying to recap, re, 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 realign or uh, yes. or uh, the way we think. Mm. So uh, yeah, I was I was going over uh, some of the materials given to us you know, prior to our program today, and um, well, um, it says here uh, from a, a column from the Star also, no. Uh, there, there is a, you know, here that it says we can borrow uh, desalination technology from Israel. Okay, so we can use seawater for our needs. Uh, these are just one of the suggestions, yeah. Brother James, no? But this technology, uh, according to uh, the writer, is, is quite expensive. Yeah, that's, so, uh, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Although, uh, according to her, uh, Singapore uh, which partly uses the technology, but depends largely on on neighboring Malaysia for its uh, fresh uh, water supply. I, I think our problem mm -hmm. with, uh, with desalination is that uh, you will be needing yes. power in order mm -hmm. to 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 yeah to uh, what filter right. salt water to uh, potable potable uh, water. I, I'm not very uh, 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 in burst with the with the desalination yeah, the yeah, so technology the but technology. the thing is if we already have mm -hmm. it but we, if we have a problem with power and energy right. oh, that's where, that's where will we get the <laughs> power in order mm -hmm. to desalinate our mm. water yeah if uh, our electricity co oh, <laughs> electricity boy. bill is so expensive oh, the problem of and the, the price of uh same the price of gas and diesel is yeah, so it's, high it's going up, yeah. so that's that's one thing that uh, we have to consider i think i believe for so. because i believe fresh water is already available mm. in mm. all all parts of our country it's just a matter of uh, using it properly right yes i, what I would, is, I would what like to build it? on that uh, this yes. week uh 
on actually on Thursday, I met uh, several of us met uh, with some engineers and such uh, think tanks. Uh, they're they're making a recommendation to mm -hmm. industry and to government, and just an amazing array of options are available to us. Uh, mm -hmm. They're encouraging that the barangays would be yeah. considered the village level, uh, having deep wells, deep wells. Uh, having water storage facilities and technologies where on the walls and uh, under the ground you're able to uh, uh, hold enormous amounts of uh, water uh, these structures are I, I think that's the, that's the first solution is uh, the rain yes, catchment, rain mm -hmm. catchment uh, yes. uh, facility mm -hmm. let's say if every household will be saving the rain that yes. comes right. you know every year we have problems with flood Mm. flooding oh, yeah. and oh. that's so much water that mm. we you just let it pass uh, sometimes we even think of the flood as a problem and a more than a blessing mm. <laughs> and <laughs> yet uh well once summer summer comes we have problem with water mm. that, that's <laughs> so it's just a matter of uh maybe understanding uh how to how to use the resources being given to us during mm. rainy season and then use it during dry season, something mm. like that. Yeah. So I think the rain catchment uh, formula solution, it's a matter of engineering, it's a mm. matter of uh, introducing some arch architectural mm. uh, design, uh, innovation. Yeah. I, th I think this is very timely, Brother James, you know, mm -hmm. because with, with uh, summer setting in, you yeah. know, and, and uh, the taps are going dry, mm -hmm. and uh, the dams also are, are yeah. in, in, in grave uh, danger. Mm -hmm. Uh, what what would be uh, the probable solutions, no, Brother James? Because you've been around the nation, you've been around. I know you've been going to different places, taking mm. a look at what's happening, right on the ground. You know, he he he's a very active man, mm, awesome. yeah, a very active advocate. Well, you know, <laughs> you, you know I, I don't know. This is maybe a, not an immediate solution, but this is yes. one one thing that we can we can uh, we can we can contribute right mm. now not for us we are experiencing the problem we have to really have a a, a quick fix solution for mm. the for the water crisis then if desalination then if redistribution redis then so be it but uh we have uh we can deforest deforest <laughs> that's the that's the best best right. solution that mm -hmm. i'm thinking but mm. another thing is the water tree we we have this water tree that was a I I only knew about it from the natives the the Aitas. Aitas, yes. They, they taught me about uh, for survival. Mm -hmm. They because their generation for generations they they experience uh, um, drought. Yes. Oh, grave. During uh, the That's there's the, the really mm -hmm. northern the central Luzon right. area, and then they, there's this one goat. Go to tree that they go. Uh, they they, they <laughs> went to okay. uh, the the water tree. Mm. That water tree is uh, normally you can see it uh, growing everywhere. Uh, you just cut the some portion of the the trunk, and then you put they they put leaves or uh, and then they they leave it overnight. Then you can get one gallon a night of Whoa, water. Wow, really? Wow, <laughs> yes. terrific. Look and at then that they, they, already have, they, they already have their drinking water. Thank you, Brother James. So, for... meaning, uh, wow. It's about understanding indigenous yeah. knowledge. We have to, we really have to, uh, no, we really He's have telling to. telling us a lot about our listen, listen, being in, the, in the Siderata, <laughs> we have, there's this praise in the yes, Siderata yes. that uh, listen to the dal and the uh, lowly because they too have their story mm. wow, meaning beautiful. all of us are mm. very educated we, are already, mm. we have all this uh, technology and yet a, a native and indigenous people knows how to survive when yeah. calamity comes and they can teach us so and many then things. for us we cannot you can't even move if no. there's no water we can uh, but they 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 know where to get water I, I hear all this discussion about yes trying to get more water but i hear little discussion on ways to drastically reduce our water consumption Use, yeah. mm -hmm. yet we have tremendous access of doing that uh in every location where you know you're able to have water waterless uh toilets you're able to have waterless washing machines mm -hmm. you're able to uh, have your sink at a higher level so you can use that gray water to uh, flush your toilet and things all sorts of technologies mm -hmm. that are out there that i think we really need to 
consider they're the, the Filipino is at the top of the game. They're highly intelligent people. <laughs> as you're saying, sharing with the natives, uh, native, right. you know, the people in the hill tracks and things. Mm. I mean, just genius uh, <laughs> solutions they've had. And you know, let's let's look at that and and draw from that and just reap tremendous benefits for fellow men. Yeah, wonderful, brother James. When you were discussing that from uh, from the uh, Sambales area yeah, yeah. along the Aitas, mm -hmm. we have a, um, a listener and a viewer, you know, uh -huh. addressing this. Uh, are you in favor of a dam build up? She's from Sambales. <laughs> a a dam build up James, should yes. be considered. Yeah, uh, I think a last priority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, totally. Because uh, you'll be okay. distorting, you'll be displacing mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. ecology. Yes. Just to benefit, always remember that uh, progress doesn't mm. automatically lead to development. Mm. Right? Mm. We pave roads, we create buildings, and then we call it progress. Mm -hmm. But is there really development? The, the, the thing is, uh, at the end of the day, we, we create more problems than development. For example, uh, like not understanding the carrying capacity of, the, of Manila. Right. We do, we say there's progress, but right now you have traffic, you have flooding, <laughs> you don't have water. <laughs> so can you say that it's development? Mm -hmm. Because development means, am I, if you ask yourself, am I okay today than I was yesterday? If not, then there's no development. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't automatically lead to progress. Progress mm -hmm. doesn't automatically lead to development. <laughs> so mm -hmm. meaning, uh, what dams i'm not uh, against dam the yes. building dams dam yes. build up. but the thing here is uh the the government should have not only for projects of dams and other and but there should be an impact analysis mm. impact analysis impact analysis uh, provision okay for all our regulations for all our policies there should be an impact analysis study first it's, yes rather because yes, what will happen one. is yeah. If you don't study, what will be the impact? If I build a road here, if I build a dam here, what will be the impact with ecology, with all the stakeholders? Just looking at the one side because uh, we're looking for a quick fix solution. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, later on, we'll retract from what we, what we did. So that's what's happening. We, we introduce a policy, we introduce a regulation, and then we we pull it back after because uh, understanding. So it's always, it's like a social experiment. We're always going through the experiment without understanding the, the real uh, uh, result of the whatever we will be introducing. So I believe uh, for dams, yes, for a dam buildup, yes. though I'm not really uh, comfortable with dams <laughs> okay. because uh, God already is the, the, the great landscape architect Art, yes so he designed everything accordingly and then we're distorting it why yeah, that, that's the big question all right yeah. thank you all right yeah. okay uh, we'll be back folks after a uh, break good news filipinas this is rj 8 10 a.m amen awesome job thank you Terrific. so you're listening to dzrj 8 10 a.m we'll be right back after these reminders Heat sensitive po ang mga loto tickets. Huwag itong babasain o paplansyahin ang inyong mga tickets. Kailangan ma-validate ng machine ang loto tickets para maklaim ang premyo. Twenty-six sa inyong list, ang daming programa. Scholarship, sports and culture, medical assistance, infrastructure project, school building, barangay halls, senior citizens building, gym, construction of roads, burial assistance, daycare center, Oakland Kalikasan, Pantay Dagat at marami pa. Eh, 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 list, iboto nyo sinograles. Twenty-six sa inyong list. TPA, party list, nograles. Paid for by Prospero Nogales, 17 Doña Vicente Village, Davao City. Bravo! 
Redding, ready ako. Redding, ready ako. Ready na rin ako. Bravo! Food supplement for men. Ang bagsik mo. With proper diet and exercise. Mahalagang paalala, ang Bravo ay hindi gamot at hindi dapat gamitin pang gamot sa anumang uri ng sakit. Radio Bandido, 8 to 10 a.m. Okay folks, uh, we're back. Uh, Good News Pilipinas, this is RJ, 8 to 10 a.m. This is your host, Francis Guzman. And with my special guest from New York and my brother, James Layog, we were discussing a while ago uh, the, the, the areas where solutions can come in. Yeah. On the water problems because this is getting to be escalated, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with summer coming in fast, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the the uh, the heat wave is coming in like anything, mm-hmm. and uh, the top the top water is drying up in, in in Metro Manila, and that's really very bad news, no? But I would like to give you some good news here, folks. Uh, mm-hmm. Philippine aims to become Southeast Asia's top creative economy wow. by 2030. So yeah. <laughs> I'm reading the good news. I, the government plans to develop uh, advertising, film, animation, game development, and design as uh, priority sectors in line with the country's aim to become the top creative economy in Southeast Asia by 2030. That's good news yeah. for us. Huh? Good. Good. So uh, also, I would like to greet my good friends uh, from the Embassy of Israel. Well, I, I uh, would like to congratulate uh, the, the new ambassador, uh, Ambassador Rafael uh, Harpas. Sir, uh, mabuhay po kayo, ambassador, <laughs> and uh, his new PR uh, lady um, who, who accommodated us uh, from the media during a press conference at the embassy, uh, Danica. As I promised her, I would greet her, and we were discussing there about uh, something related to the Philippines also because we're entering an election a month in, uh, you know, mm-hmm. the elections are coming in in two weeks, uh, two, two months from now, mm-hmm. and uh, on April 9, Israel, has its election. And uh, they were saying about, you know, I'm reading from uh, Jerusalem, Dateline Jerusalem, and experts warn of cyber threats ahead of Israel's election. And so I I had an interview with the uh, good ambassador from Israel, Ambassador Rafael, and uh, well, he says that 72% vote in Israel. Do you believe that? 72% of the population vote in Israel. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, uh, the ballots are open uh, after April 9, immediately, I mean, I mean immediate, you know, um, it prevents things like what has happened here, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So um, he was he was telling us so many good news about uh, what is happening in, in Israel, which can be, uh, you know, uh, which can, can influence or, or give, uh, you know, uh, uh, encouragement to us uh, Filipinos, you know, who love democracy, uh, uh, one of the... Um, uh, this, the series of democracy is voting the right way, mm, yeah. you know, and the right people. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, we, we're having uh, uh, on May, the national as well as the local elections together. It's, it's called the midterm elections, Brother Ted. It's not so familiar. So I, I was telling Brother Ted, who is an Israeli yeah. from New York. And, um, well, uh, things like this and, 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 and uh, issues like the water would be a, a, a top issue of, of the elections. Yeah, water, you know, um, uh, energy, access, you, you know, basic utilities. Yeah, the basic things that are needed, as, as Robert James Power, was, uh, water, was mentioning a while ago. And um, I'm so glad that Brother James has gone around the nation looking mm. at uh, us as a movement that is dedicated to, to change, you know, to transformation and advocacies, you know. Brother James is, is one of the, the people like uh, the unsung heroes of our nation. Mm. Like, uh, you know, where we're also celebrating on April 9, the Araw ng Kagitikan, yeah. you know, our heroes during the Second World War. <laughs> yeah. And Brother James Fox is, uh, mm. is uh, I'm, I'm so uh, happy to have him. I'm so honored. He's, he's one, of the, the, one of the, for me, <laughs> one of the best from the Philippine Military Academy. Mm. Uh, I was telling that a while ago to Brother Ted, no? Um, and, you know, the advocacies of people like him, uh, will never die because mm. these are the legacies that you leave behind for the generations to come. Um, mm. James, uh, yeah, uh, okay. we'll be celebrating April 9. Yes, say Araw of Kag- Araw, uh, Araw ng Kagitingan. Kagitingan, yeah. Uh, day of Valor, something like <laughs> the that. The Day of Valor. Actually, it's mm. a bravery. It's, 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 it's to commemorate the fall of Bataan. Mm. Yeah. So most critics they say that uh, 
why do Filipinos celebrate? Uh, they're not celebrating victories. They're celebrating <laughs> uh, like fall of Bataan is the fall uh, that's uh, celebrated as Day of Valor. Mm. Though it was a test of uh, the courage, the bravery, and the valor of uh, the Filipinos, yes. mm. Filipino warriors. But uh, but for me, uh, when I was talking with our friends, yes, it's, it has to be celebrated. Mm. Not really to commemorate those who fought, died, and uh, suffered for in, during that war. But because uh, on that day, the Americans surrendered. Mm. It is General Wainwright who surrendered to the Japanese. It's not the Filipinos. Mm. So after Wainwright surrendered, then you see, you, we saw the rise of the Pukbalahaps, the guerrillas, the hunter guerrillas, mm. and the guerrilla movement, of, which are Filipino-led. And which, before MacArthur came, we are, we are already all liberated half of our country. Wow. We are, the the, the Japanese the Japanese huh? cannot mm. even mm. enter the Muslim Mindanao area because their heads will be cut off. Mm. <laughs> so so <laughs> meaning we were already <clears throat> winning, and the so war, yes. so April nine marks the fall of the Americans, the surrender of the Americans, and the start of the real liberation, which mm. is where the Filipinos stood up on their own without mm. the Americans. We were fighting off the Japanese without the American support. We were combating them on guerrilla fronts, mm. and we were winning. The wow. Japanese are stuck in their barracks in their uh, in in Manila, but they cannot go to the countryside anymore. So that's that's the real picture. That's the real scenario. So April mm -hmm. 9, though we commemorate the bravery, the heroism of yes, those well, who fought yes. together with the with the Americans, but I believe. The one that surrendered on April 9 and uh, May 11, I think, mm -hmm. in Corridor, is not not the Filipinos. It's mm. the American forces oh, in, in, in the Far yeah. East. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the American forces in the Far East. The Filipinos, we remained here and we fought, mm. and we were almost we were already liberated our country. But uh, because of the MacArthur Great uh, no oh. of. Uh, <laughs> I shall return. Yeah, <laughs> they, always said that. They, oh, they, they, was, again, once more, yeah, the liberator, <laughs> as we say. But uh, I believe we are already free. Even if the Americans did not came, did not come, mm. we'll be liberating our country. Mm. That's the reason why uh, April 9 is very significant. Mm. Uh, the bravery of the Filipino soldiers, you know. Mm. Yeah. And uh, in. Uh, Unity with the citizens uh, all over the Philippines, especially the key areas mm. of the provinces. In the Filipinos. And, uh, yeah, and and so I was I was going over in the daily bread. You know, uh, what are you known for, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Brother James? And uh, uh, I'm reading here from Hebrews uh, eleven twenty six. It says here Moses regarded a disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt mm. because he was looking ahead to his reward. Mm -hmm. yeah. See the, the word, uh, when you take it into the context of, uh, of the physical, because this yeah. is the spiritual realm, uh, what mm -hmm. I'm reading from the book of Hebrews, uh, Brother James was saying that yeah, in the physical, the Filipinos have done their part to protect the nation that mm. they love so yeah. much mm. and um, even if America was there trying to you know uh, ally with us to to help us in the war it was actually the frontliners the Filipinos the Filipinos were the frontliners yeah were running, lost running so much, the ground so much blood yeah. was mm. spilled especially in the Battle of Manila uh, yeah mm -hmm. I, I just want to yes, well, just... reiterate that uh, that commemorating the World War II oh, yes, the, uh, April 9, as Araw ng Kitingan, Araw ng Kitingan. Uh, Day of Valor, because uh, Valor is in our DNA, it's in our mm. blood, it's in, it's in us, and it's in, it will be in the next, next generation, generation of Filipinos. Mm. Yeah. It's just a matter of uh, understanding who is the enemy. Mm. Right now, if we can agree that uh, Valor is in us, and the enemy is ourselves, mm. meaning uh, we have to agree that uh, we have to 
band together to fight poverty, mm. band together to save our environment, band together to uh, to make sure that uh, this uh, uh, will have a better country that will be passing on to the next generation. generation to that's ahead. heroism and that's valor already. Terrific. If we, we agree on that and then uh, we do something about it on a daily basis, you do not have to be fighting fighting mm. in the trenches, ha having blood uh, spilled, spilled, out. Yes. spilled out in order to be a hero. Mm. Being a hero is uh, doing the right thing mm. for your country, for your family, for your mm. community, for your, for your family, for your community, and for your country. And then uh, you're doing it not for you, but like for me, I'm doing this for my son and for the next generation. Mm. Like because uh, what we have right now, the, the mess that we are in right now, is what we inherited from the generations that was uh, uh, the, the ones uh, ahead of us. So we're just inheriting what mm -hmm. they did. So we have to do something so that the next generation will have a better country. Mm, and they'll yes. not say that uh, we 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 didn't do something about it. Mm. That's very really true, Brother James. I I hundred percent agree with him. One hundred percent. You too, also, Brother Ted. Well, you know, we're getting feedback right here, and uh, this is Sita's from the U.S. From okay, Sita's. The legacy of valor, not to the max for the next gen. Uh, not all men grew up with a dad like yours. Mm. It takes a special dad to teach the virtue, I think, just as this, Brother James. Mm. Uh, that's very <laughs> um, special. Your, your dad now did a lot mm. for uh. the next generation. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, yes. I think it's about doing, doing the right thing for the next generation. Generation, that's, yes. That's and, um, and, and it, does not, it, it doesn't have to be grand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, I always, uh, I, I had this uh, quote, by Mother Teresa that I always care oh. with me. If you cannot do great things, if you cannot do great thing or do a grand thing, at least do small things with great love. Mm. Wow, wonderful. With, with that, that. Uh, if all of us, mm. 100 million Filipinos will be doing that, we'll small that. things yeah. with great love for the country, Terrific. I think uh, we will we'll be, we'll be yeah. far ahead That's mm. very as, a, as a nation, as a country. You know, um, uh, Brother uh, James, uh, Ted, I had uh, the honor of meeting uh, Mother Teresa oh. when she came here uh, from India. Mm. And, um, well, she opened a, a, um, a facility on health for the uh, elderly and the dying, you know, mm. in Tondo. And, um, well, I was assigned, I was still with the bulletin, I was assigned to cover her and uh, do an exclusive interview with my photographer. And, you know, uh, I saw her carry... Um, so a very a poor and dying person, mm. you know, she, she would she would just show her love, you know, and compassion in, in a small way, and it multiplies. There is mm -hmm. a multiplier effect, you know, and yes, it, it impacts to the people who witness it. Mm -hmm. and this is what Brother James was saying a while ago. Sometimes you get frustrated yeah. <laughs> as if there's nothing happening. But uh, mm -hmm. in reality, there's that butterfly effect that you're saying. It's, it ripples out. Right. If it, you may not see it, now, yeah. but I believe in the next two, three generations, it will happen. Very, very true. I, I yes, see uh, great hope. Uh -huh. you know, we're talking about the Philippines' goals for year 2030. I, I believe it's very achievable. You know, I, I see us birthing literally millions of small businesses that birth millions more of uh, just absolutely profound uh, uh, improvements, uh, advances, and uh, water yes, delivery water systems, head. agriculture, all sorts of things. I, you know, right now we're working on uh, clear, cleaning wastewater yeah. okay. and uh, reusing That's that sad. in very profound ways, making it so clean that you can actually drink it again. And, you know, to, really with, have uh, to act so. now. I, I believe really have to act now. When I was, uh, yes, Robert James, 21 years old, I guess, and, uh, 25, 24, I'll say a young lieutenant, we are 70 million Filipinos. Mm. I remember that clearly, 70 million Filipinos. Wow. At a big population. That was just <laughs> 1996, <laughs> 95. That. And now we have 110 million Filipinos. So we're expanding exponentially. Mm. 
And if we do not really take care or make uh, find a solution how to yes. conserve and mm. reuse or find mm. sustainable ways of uh, means of uh, using our, our resources, um, at some point uh, this will burst pop out and uh, we'll all have a problem in our mm. faces. So um, while we are discussing that, Brother James and Brother Ted, uh, yeah. we have a, a listener and viewer from Iloilo uh, addressing Iloilo. this uh, to both of you, especially to Brother James. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mark uh, uh, says this in Tagalog, no? May pag-aasa pa ba sa water crisis? <laughs> pag-aasa pa ba? May pag-aasa. Uh, <laughs> Yung pag-asa yan ang hindi nawawala sa Pilipino. Yeah, and that's <laughs> what we were saying a while ago. Na yung nga sinasabi ko kay eh, Brother Francis na yes. for some reason, si Bonifacio, ang ginawa niyang nom digger o pseudonym niya is may pag-asa. Kasi siguro dahil uh, inaano niya na ang Pilipino, kahit anong krisis, kahit, unos, kahit anong problema, babangon yan. Dahil parati siyang may pag-asa. So I believe yung water crisis is a temporary, ano, is a temporary thing. Especially uh, Filipinos kapag ka, pagka, ano yan eh, pagka, pagka nahaharap sa isang malaking krisis o problema, nagsasama-sama. Kasi ano natin yan eh, although maraming sinik, maraming uh, ganyan, uh, problema, or everybody looks at yung negative values natin, virtues mm. natin. Pero ang Pilipino uh, once confronted with a crisis, I believe. Uh, yung bayanihan spirit nandiyan yan. Magtutulong-tulong yan. Meron magte-take advantage, pero karamihan ng Pilipino magtutulong-tulong para masolve itong ano, problema natin. To. So, yung water crisis, uh, uh, darating, pero ma masusolusyonan din natin yan. Together as a people. Yan ang, ah, ang paniniwala beautiful. You heard that, Brother Ted. He's talking about teamwork. He's talking mm. about brotherhood here. Mm. He's talking about compassion and love, you know, for people, for, mm. for your own fellow men. Uh, and, and united, you can do it, you mm. know. That's right. And um, because I, I was looking over the, um, uh, the famous quote of uh, our very famous hero of the Philippine uh, Revolution, you know. Uh, he, he's called Gat Andres Bonifacio, and uh, I'm, I'm speaking this in Tagalog in the in the in the language. You know, ang tunay na pag-ibig sa Dios, he says. No, I see ring pag-ibig sa tinubuan, okay? At yan din ang pag-ibig sa kapwa. You know, uh, he, he's saying here the the great hero, uh, Andres Bonifacio which has uh, impacted uh, uh, the movement of uh, change in the Philippines uh, and the movement that is called There is Hope, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it impacts both the love of God, mm -hmm. you know, the love of the fellow man, you know, and the love of the nation. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And, and it, it gets to the bottom line of, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's fellowshipping, mm -hmm. it's brotherhood, mm -hmm. you know, uh, walang iwanan. So, yes, brother James. Uh, yan, ang, yan ang virtue natin na uh, is already in us, yung bayanihan. Yes. Uh, yung the mga, bayanihan mga ganitong crisis, mm -hmm. yeah. just like any other crisis that uh, our, our, our nation or our people already conf uh, ano fought with. No? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, we will have a solution for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe it's a challenge for our leaders also, for them yes. to uh, no, to step up. It's a wake up call. It's mm. a wake up call. Mm. If, if they cannot uh, do their role, eh, mm -hmm. 2013 is the best time to uh, to help hold them accountable for mm. their leadership. Kung palpaki leadership, edi singilin yung sa, no, sa sa balota in the ballots. Oh, because the, the forthcoming election of the mm. Philippines is coming in, just like Israel is going to have it on April 9. Mm. <laughs> so, Brother James, um, you were you had some papers here that you wanted to discuss with oh, us. Yeah. Uh, can you, you can, mention you can, this? Please. We have about five minutes or seven yeah. minutes more. Yes, please. Well, whenever I, I got here, 
uh, you know, I, I saw the Brungai movement and things, uh, you know, what was wow. happening with mm. poverty Grass around. Okay. And then mm. communities you know, right. traveled around the country. Okay. You know, I've been uh, uh, introduced to a roundtable series on poverty, uh, the uh, water programs for the poor through implementation of uh, assistance uh, through municipality level. Okay. Uh, I, you know, my passion is to enable the 75, 80 percenters so that they're able to, you know, morph this thing. And so, you know, conceptually, you know, we were thinking maybe we'll try to reach 10%. Well, <laughs> with what I learned this week, okay. we honestly believe we can reach 100% of the poor throughout the whole country. And this thing is going to literally morph. I mean, there's so much going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of, uh, you know, from water technologies and construction technologies and things that, it, it's gonna, things are gonna be just absolutely amazing what, what's coming down. So uh, what, what we're saying, I, I think is spot on. You know, we need this credibility. You know, we need we, we have this incredible knowledge base now. Uh, you know, let's build on this. Let's actually read the text that provides this sure foundation that will enable us to fly. You know, I am Israeli descent, and I gotta tell you, we owe the Philippines a debt of gratitude, so I, I, Thank you very much. You know, right. I'm, I'm ready to go to a, a conference that is, you know, we love Israel. I mean, you know, let me tell you, Israel loves the Philippines. You oh, know. thank you. Yeah. Well, let's partner together. Yeah, let's partner. Let's see how, uh, yes. how we yeah. can conquer I have friends challenge. that are that they claim, uh, I forget, yeah, the, right book, uh, the verse Genesis. Uh, the book of Genesis. Yeah. Mm. Those, oh, who bless, those who those bless Israel, Israel bless. will be blessed. Mm. Yeah. Wow, see that he believes that curse. Mm. that's faith. Mm. <laughs> the chosen people will be also I yeah. mean, cursed. Mm. That's what uh, the, the book of Genesis, the, the, mm. of Genesis the, the word of God mm. says. So I, I believe partnership uh, with uh, Israel really mm. uh, boost the uh, not just the economy but uh, the status or the state of our mm. of our right. people. Yeah, mm. the relationship. You know. Yeah. Wonderful. So, Thank you. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, can you wrap it up, uh, Brother Ted and Brother uh, James? Yeah, Could for you? me, it's a, it's a, uh, thank you very much for inviting oh, me. Oh, most, well, you, we are most honored. <laughs> also, My good friend and brother. Yes, brother, brother Ted. Ted. Thank you so but, much. Uh, for, for our listeners, our viewers, mm. uh, I'm saying, so, uh, let's commemorate uh, April 9. Mm. Yeah. Araw ng Kagitingan. Hindi po fall, though, Hindi po yan fall ng bataan lang, kundi yan ang tunay na pagtayo ng mga Pilipino. So, nasa puso po natin yan, nasa DNA natin yung heroi, yung pagiging bayani. Heroism, pagiging yeah. bayani. Bravery. So, ipasa natin yan sa susunod na generasyon. Pero ang mm -hmm. tunay na kalaban ngayon, kalaban natin ay gutom, kahirapan. Diyan po tayo magtulong-tulong. Uh, yan ang bagong bataan na kailangan nating ipaglaban. Uh, so with that, maraming salamat po at uh, parati pong may pag-asa. Sabi nga, magandang umaga, may pag-asa. Yes, there is hope for the uh, Philippines. Man. Okay, Brother Ted. Uh, you know, uh, the Philippines has been a tremendous blessing to me and my people. And uh, I say salamat po. And we just trust, you know, blessings uh, yes. on our efforts. So, um, Brother Ted, um, uh, as we end the good news, Filipinas, mm. and we'll be back next week uh, for another very important issue mm. on the generation that he was saying, the next mm. generation to come. Mm. We have guests, uh, youth. Mm. Wow. Oh, I hope you can millennials. be with our millennials. Mm. And uh, we will always end the good news with the word of God mm. uh, to inspire, encourage us all, and to, to, to bring out the compassion and the love of mankind. Okay, in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, his word says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, mm. to give you a, a future and a hope. Mm. You know, may pagasa. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this is followed by another uh, wonderful verse here. You know, uh, in, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, Therefore, uh, encourage one another, and build up one another just as you both you're doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. God be the glory. Mabuhay Thank Pilipinas. You. Good news. Philippines. Good news. Good news. <laughs> <laughs>
Radio Bandido, 810 AM.